In a world where stuntmen are crazy hot, where powerful women openly sexualize the men who work for them. How many takes do you have of that? I've got five takes. Oh, so big. Yeah. One man will do stunts. Stunts, 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 stunts. When I first saw the Fall Guy trailer, admittedly, I was a little confused as to what this movie was going to be. But with the promise of fun, stupidity, and STUNTS, I put on my crash helmet and went to see The Fall Guy. And it was pretty okay. The best way I can describe this movie is imagine someone took one of those C-tier Christmas rom-coms that play on the Hallmark Channel and forcibly mashed it together with a C-tier action movie from the Spike Channel. Remember that? Remember Spike TV? So you can freeze a fart, but how? Can beer make your girlfriend's boobs bigger? Yes, yes. <laughs> That's what this movie feels like. Unfortunately, it also feels like someone poured an aggressive amount of cringy, overly self-aware millennial humor on this movie, but I'll talk about that later. So for my highbrow critic score, I gotta give this movie a 6 out of 10. And for my schmo score, the rating for the average Joe Schmo, I give The Fall Guy a 7 out of 10. I don't think I would recommend this one for the boys, but for the girls, well, to give you a feel for this movie, there's about a two minute long lovey dovey montage with Taylor Swift playing in the background. Even crying to Taylor Swift? Doesn't everyone? <laughs> what am I gonna do now? <laughs> yep, you're gonna have a good time, ladies. Also, I think this would make a really good date movie. Anyways, this is the part where I explain my review score, so if you want to watch The Fall Guy, spoiler free, this is where we part ways. Thanks for being here, and I will see you someplace else. Now, does this movie make good on its promise of being fun, stupid, and full of STUNTS? Yeah, I think so. It has its fun moments. Unfortunately, it has way too many stupid moments which become a problem throughout the whole movie. But I am happy to say it does make good on its promise of STUNTS. So many stunts, especially at the end. So at least it ends on a high note. Like I said, this movie is basically a bad rom-com mashed together with a bad action movie, but with a ridiculous budget which made all of the stunts amazing. Unfortunately, it looks like money couldn't save the writing cause it was atrocious. They went for that over the top Marvel humor, you know, where everyone is so self-aware and fourth wall breaking and no one behaves like an actual human being. Instead, they act like a character of what I imagine a single millennial woman thinks is a cool, confident person. Everyone wants to be a Deadpool movie one, but you can't. Not even Deadpool can pull off a Deadpool movie one again. Have you seen the second movie? You are dumb. I mean, whoever planned this stunt was smoking a lot of jazz cabbage. I'll tell you that much. Narratively, this movie is barely functional because it has all the problems of a bad rom-com and a bad action movie. The rom-com parts have all the hyper idealized situations and conversations that definitely, definitely won't give women an extremely unhealthy, unrealistic expectation of how relationships actually develop and function. And it has all the bad action movie tropes, like there being zero consequences to all the mayhem caused, where you can crash like 20 cars and set off multiple explosions in the middle of a bustling city and no one seems to care. Well, to be fair, this movie does take place in Australia, and maybe it be like that down there. I don't know. What do you got to say about this, Australia? So I jumped out of bed, and all I had was my undies on, and I've walked out the front, and I've seen uh, the car smashed, and I've seen the bloke walking back to the car. And so I've walked outside, and I said, oh, what are you doing, mate? I just said, nah, it's not going on like that, mate. Let it go, dogs. Everyone and everything in this movie basically acts like a cartoon parody of reality. 
I mean, they even call attention to this very thing in the movie, but you know, just because you're self-aware of your flaws and even call them out, doesn't make the flaws any less worse. Yeah. Also, there were several scenes where they would do a bit and just hold on to it for way too long. We get it, you're very self-aware and very clever, but the joke ended like 10 minutes ago. Let's move on. This movie has a lot of cringe, and not in the good way, but it also has a lot of fun moments. As for the acting, it's kind of hard to say because the writing is so bad, they're all just kind of working with what they got. But I will say, it seems like everyone in this movie is genuinely having a good time, which I like seeing, and it made the movie experience better. This movie has a lot of problems, but it is fun, especially once you turn your brain off. So, do I recommend The Fall Guy? Yes and no. If you're looking for a safe PG-13 movie to take the family to, yeah, this'll work. Or if you're looking for a girls' night out movie, for sure. But the people I mostly recommend this movie to are couples. I think this movie is a good date movie. It doesn't take itself too seriously, it's very stupid, but it is fun with a high production value. Anyways, that's all I got. Thanks for being here, I appreciate you, and I'll catch ya on the next one.